All right, so where we left off, we were researching typefaces that we thought would get us started with our type design, right? So I already kind of blocked it out and know how much space I want it to take and how I want to arrange it with my spot illustration in this case. And with my logo, I know how I want it to kind of wrap around and I want this to be a more readable, kind of more classic typeface. So starting with the, the unicorn, the more hand done version, I went to Defont, I typed in childish, and I found these. And then I also uh, went to letterpress, which is one of my favorites. Kind of use the computer and digital art to reference the very first kind of mass production of text. And I downloaded this one, right? Kind of curious about how Forking Bull looks. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That might be worth downloading. It's kind of classic. But then I can also type in modern. Now modern is a really large typeface category. <laughs> you know, super large. Because it basically means any typeface, basically that started in the 20th century with the Bauhaus font, that doesn't have serifs, right? And serifs are the decorative little tips. But sometimes they can get so modern that they, they lose readability. And sometimes they're so modern and generic looking, they lose interest. This one's kind of interesting though. I like that this one is kind of hand-drawn. Hand-drawn modern is an interesting idea. This one looks like Nazis. <laughs> Ooh, this one's kind of classic and interesting. I, I like that one. Okay. So the trick is you have to remember what they're called because then you go to your downloads folder and there'll be zip files in your downloads folder. And when you click on the zip file, it will unzip and give you sometimes a folder and sometimes just an OTF or a TTF file. Once you get to that OTF or TTF file, I actually want you to drag and drop it onto your desktop. So all the ones you think you might use. Once you get to that TTF file, that's the best one to use. Drop it onto your desktop. Let's see what else did I do? Here we go, TTF file, drop it onto the desktop. And I'll show you how you load them in. Hold letterpress, drop it onto the desktop. I'm curious about this one. Mix Modern, I think, was this one. Oh, they have an outline version and they have a solid version. Those can be good. I'm going to take both of those. So drop them onto the desktop. All right. So now, how do I load them? Well, you see, I've already pulled a few. These are ones I pulled from a search at home. And this is just how you load them. You just double click on the TTF and you install the font. On a Mac, it installs it into the font book, which makes it available in all programs. So it's a bit of a chore, but just go ahead and do it. Not more than six, let's say. <laughs> I'm doing two different logos or two different type solutions.
And the reason I want them on the desktop is I'm going to mark the ones I'm most excited about using so I can remember their names. That one's already loaded. This one I'm excited about, Ruler Modern. Taxing my computer a little bit here. Yeah, there's probably a few things I should close. So my font book has 107 fonts now. This is one I'm definitely interested in using, trying out for the, uh, the forking bull. So I'm going to mark that one. Here it is. So I'm just going to mark it with a green. Then let's see, DOS Modern, very German sounding. Interesting that some of them take longer to load than others. Now, all of these are vector shapes. That's all type design is. Vector shapes that's synced up to a certain key on the keyboard. And so we're going to learn how to manipulate those vectors and make them our own. I know I want a childish kid as well. I think Childish Kid is what I'm kind of excited about for uh, the unicorn. Now, sometimes it will tell you there are problems. Sometimes they'll say they're serious. And if they say they're serious, maybe don't use it. It just means they won't work well. Not sure why I would want this, but it looks like someone drawing by hand, you know, what a clean modern font would be. And I might as well get the outline version. Now designers will just have a ton of different typeface options, right? There are a ton. You can find ones. When I was doing kind of Pokemon inspired ones, I could find Pokemon ones. When I was doing My Little Pony inspired ones, I could find My Little Pony versions. Sometimes they have weird names. Oh, there we go. MLP, right? Or Equestria. <laughs> so you could you can go crazy trying to choose all of these, right? So instead, I like to start with kind of inspiration and a sketch and then go right to trying it out. So I'm going to use the unicorn. And I am going to open my PNG of it, the thing that I uploaded for assignment seven. I'm going to open my spot illustration in Illustrator. And right now, it is no longer vector line work, right? So I'm not working on my vector line work. I'm working on the full spot illustration, the PNG, the raster image just like you submitted to PhotoBucket. And it comes in as a raster image. Because all I'm doing is using Illustrator now to design the type. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. Then I'm also going to bring in, or open with Illustrator, my sketch of the type blocking. Then I'm going to copy it, <coughs> close it, and on a new layer, paste it in. 
And if I can size it, I can play with the transparency. Just This is just rough. Come on. Oh, large selection. Hold down shift, lock its proportions. I might have to rotate it a little bit. But that's roughly what I'm going for. Okay, now I'm going to lock both of those. I'm going to put my spot illustration on top. And if you want, I just did transparency, so I already kind of onion skinned it. I'm going to make a new layer that's unlocked on top of that. And I'm going to use the type tool, which is a T in Illustrator. And with this type tool, just like in a word processor, I can choose a typeface and I can type with it. Come on. Just by clicking. So. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. Right now, for some reason, it's surrounding it in black. But I think that's just because it's selected. Yeah, so it's just regular black on white with no stroke type. This is Myriad Pro regular at 12 points. Because it's a vector, it's measured in points, not in pixels. So I need to look back and say, OK, what was the name of the one I liked? Childish Kid. So I'm going to change Myriad Pro to Childish Kid. And then I'm going to choose much larger point size, maybe 220. That's too big. Maybe 180. It's a little too big. How about 160? That might work. This is called uh, Latin text. It's just kind of nonsense text that comes in. OK, now I'm actually going to type my text. So I use the type tool. I select it all, and then I can type it in. The unicorn. It kind of works well, just like that, but it doesn't fit my blocking very well. And then I also don't know if there's like a bullet point, but I can try. So option eight. Yeah, it has a bullet point. Nice, but it's not the most interesting bullet point ever. And then I wanted to try, if you remember my text blocking, I wanted to try the U extra big and the rest kind of small. So what if I take my U and I make it much bigger? So maybe 230. This isn't terrible. All right, so if I think I have a good start here, there's a few things I can do. First, before I take it out of the text tool, I can play with the kerning. That's the space between the letters. Notice how the I feels really tight in between the N and the C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the I, hold down Option, and then press right with the arrow keys. And that will increase the kerning on the right of the I. And if I press left, it will go back. And then if I need it on the other side of the end, I can do the same thing. Hold down Option and increase the kerning a little bit. Spacing is incredibly important. Sometimes you'll have font options, right? They would be under here, like bold or italic or script. But if you don't have those, it's because it's not part of the type options. And that's, that's usually true of default. OK, now I'm pretty happy with the spacing. I might make this E a little bit smaller. Maybe 140. And I can customize the, uh, the size of each letter. So I can make the I maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, to help the readability. Good. Maybe make the in a tiny bit smaller so it's not the.